Imagine browsing YouTube and coming across a video that tells you 10 good reasons why the Earth isn't a globe. Now for me that would be commonplace, but for most people they'd be thinking what is this about? Well the creator of this video thinks that these reasons are undebunkable would you believe? Well there's only one thing for it then isn't there? Let's debunk the hell out of them. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Babbel. Now Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. Its intuitive lessons help you learn a language through real life conversations. Now I've got some aspirations of taking part in some pretty big races in France in the coming years. And despite doing French at school, I've forgotten pretty much all of it other than bonjour. Now I want to be respectful and talk with the race organisers and the marshals in their own language. Now Babbel is scientifically proven to help you learn a new language in three weeks. And the great thing about it is the actual lessons you do are designed by real language teachers. And on top of all of that, Babbel offer you a 20 day money back guarantee. Now, as I said, Babbel teaches real world conversations. The lessons prepare you to have practical conversations on travel, business relationships, and more. Plus, Babbel have a few different subscriptions to choose from, including a lifetime subscription. Now, I'm on my fourth lesson uh, of French at the moment, so here we go. Salut, uh, Diane, are you? So, tu va bien? Are you doing all right? Diane, tu vas bien? So, I is je. Oui, je suis à Paris pour le weekend. Et Paul? He is il. Il est à la maison. Ah ben ça alors, avec la petite Emily. And she is elle. Oui, Got it. Elle est malade, la pauvre. Perfect. Easy as that. What language would you like to learn? Let me know in the comments. Start speaking a new language in three weeks with Babbel. Get 60% off your subscription. Just click the link in the description. Right, back to today's video, which comes from the Tomb of Illumination. Weird name, I know. He thinks he's got 10 undebunkable reasons why the Earth is not a spinning globe. And we're gonna look at the first five today, so without further ado, away we go. Welcome everybody, welcome to another video on physics. Actual physics concerning our flat Earth system. This is the term of illumination. Check out my other videos if you haven't been here before. But today I'm going to go through 10 10 <coughs> uh, undebunkable proofs that you live on a flat earth, not a spinning ball. Undebunkable, hey? The arrogance. It's funny, isn't it? Anybody can go and check on these things themselves and verify what I'm saying. They're undebunkable. Pretty strange if you live on a ball how all these things correlate. We shall see, my friend, we shall see. <clears throat> so if you haven't seen the flat earth model before, you're new to the channel, that's basically looking down on the earth, small centre north, wider southern field out here, all the way around. Because that's what a, uh, that's what a uh, Taurus field would look like. Something similar to this. So a donut. We're on donut earth now, are we? Centre north in here. An expanding field. Expanding. As the hyperboloid centre comes out, it expands outward. That's why we have a book called the Bible. The bull represents expansion. Pretty sure the word Bible came after the said creation of the Bible. But what do I know? Bi mean dual, male and female. The whole system's male and female. We could say that strong northern centre, this here, magnetic confinement, very strong, male. Weaker force out here is the female because it's more widely distributed. Same energy here as there is all the way around here. But per magnetic cycle ratio, this is weaker than in here. Well, that was a colossal load of word salad, wasn't it? It's not what science tells you, is it? So if you put a slice through the flat earth system like that, 
you come up with something similar to this. This is what the ancients told you, it looked like a turtle. But another depiction is like this. If you can imagine you're the observer in every place at once, that would be the even picture you would get. So far, I've not seen any reasons as to why the Earth is not a globe. Come on now. Let's get to his main reason, shall we? Stars viewed at night from a ball or a flat Earth. While you're standing on your ball, all the stars are all over the place at night. The night sky is infinite, isn't it? It's infinite. So, we're on the ball. The night sky is in the ball. That's not circular. So why are we being shown the circular formation of stars all the time? Because we rotate every 24 hours. Wow, that one was easy. That one wasn't a very good reason, was it, Lindsay? If you don't understand that, go and check out some time-lapse or star trail photography. Yes, a beautiful example of our rotation. That's how the stars move across your horizon. Because man, man stands 90 degrees to the zenith of his arc of horizon. A 180 degree view of his world around him. Everything comes up and over his arc of horizon. Nothing goes below the horizon, it just goes out of perspective. Tell that to people in your country who can't see the North Star. Yet here in the UK, we can. It's gone beyond his visual perspective. Okay, every man has an arc of horizon. The ancient Egyptian told us this. So, this can't happen if you're on a ball. Why would it be curving like that in the night sky? Why would the stars be forming a curve? Oh, another easy one. The closer the stars get to the celestial poles, the more they curve. Here is an example of star trails from the equator. Not only can you see the straight ones, but you can also see how they change direction, almost like they're in another hemisphere. Weird, that. Just because the ball is rolling, and we're passing stars, they would be shooting out here, wouldn't they? They're not, they're not going up or down on this curve. No, it doesn't make sense. There is that wonderful saying again. Okay. Two, tracking stars. Tracking the stars with a star tracker or equatorial mount. So... An equatorial mount that wouldn't work on a flat Earth, you mean? Well, that's an easy one. Next, please. Check out a star tracker yourself. Uh, three, two sky rotations. How can we have two sky rotations? If you're standing on the ball, if you're standing there, how, how do you see two star rotations like this. I've sort of already shown that. One is the northern celestial sphere and one is the southern celestial hemisphere. That is really not hard and these are really not good reasons. With a gap. Especially if you're standing at the equator. If you're going to mention the equator, looking up. Because that's near the equator. There's a gap between two rotations. We're not looking south, we're not looking north, we're looking more or less directly overhead. And there's two rotations. There can only be two rotations if there's a flat Earth system, because we have the Northern Hemisphere rotation all the way out to Cancer. And then we have the Southern, the southern rotation all the way up to Capricorn, out to South. Well, they aren't two rotations really. They both rotate the same way. They've got slightly different orientations, but we know why that is. Due to our rotation, the stars all move in the same direction, but with this example here, we can see on the left, which is facing the south celestial pole, the stars are rising in the east, left when facing south, and setting in the west to the right when facing south, giving you a clockwise rotation. And the stars on the right of this picture, which is towards the north celestial pole, rising in the east, which is to the right facing north, and setting in the west, which is to the left facing north, give us a counterclockwise rotation. Hardly undebunkable these, are they? Number four, please. Four, the southern stars retreat into the tropical gap after the December solstice. 
tropical gap. What in the blue blazers is that? Science doesn't tell you that. The two rotations, like this. Well, this, this is the southern hemisphere. Slowly creeps in and overlays under the northern hemisphere. Anybody can see that because the crux stars, the Southern Cross, we see here in December, comes up to about here in June. It's being drawn under the Northern Hemisphere stars. Yes, but the stars from our perspective here in the Northern Hemisphere will move too, but not in the direction towards the Southern Cross. It's because the Earth is tilted, of course. Uh, and in the Northern Hemisphere summer, we're tilted one way, and in six months later, we're tilted another way relative to the Sun. Like two tectonic plates. This is why the Bible tells you at the time, at the certain time, at the time of an event, there's earthquakes. They're trying to describe it to you through your mind. Earthquakes, tectonic plate rubbing, overlaying tectonic plates. I can pretty much guarantee that this is not what they mean. And of course they had no knowledge of plate tectonics back when the Bible was written. This is why you're seeing some esoteric images that have been around for heaps of years. There's this point here. This is the overlay. This is, this is the June, this is, this is, so this is December out here, December, the Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere centre. So this is, this, is the, this is the Southern rotations on your meridian. It drifts this way because it's to do with this image that comes down and up and down in here in this vortex over the season. The vortex that no one has ever seen. Gotcha. Reason five, please, buddy. You won't understand it, though. That's why you come to this channel. I break it all down. Five, Orion's belt appearing for nine months, but only gone for three. So how does that work on a nice symmetrical ball? How can Orion's belt be seen for nine months and then gone for only three? Orion is situated on the celestial equator. Now that means that depending on your position on the globe and what time of year it is, you aren't always going to see it. Here in the UK, it's only visible between October and April. And if you live on the equator, then you'll see it all the time. And these are possibly the worst reasons we don't live on a globe I have ever seen. We've actually heard them all before, and I cannot wait to look at the next five next week. So that means we're done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thanks so much for watching. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost at that half a million now. And of course, give a big thumbs up as well. Just enough time to say once again, thank you to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Remember, you can start speaking a new language within three weeks with Babbel. You can get 60% off your subscription. Just click the link in the description. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a cracking weekend. And I'll see you on Tuesday for my favourite, the moon landing. After Flat Earth, of course. See you then.